Hello and welcome back. Uh, in the last video, we learned or we made an introduction to the relationship between linear scale factor, area scale factor, and the volume scale factor. And so in this video, we are going to look at two or three examples on how we can apply this knowledge uh, to any question that we are given. So, let's have one example. So let's say we have a triangle. Let's name this triangle A. And then we have another triangle. Let's name it B. And then we are told that these two triangles are similar. And triangle A measures uh, 3 centimeters, 3 centimeters by 4 centimeters. And then we are given the hypotenuse of triangle B as 10 centimeters. So triangle A and B are similar. And the question is, find the area, find the area of triangle B. So how do we go about such a question? So in the last video, we said that if we are told that two, uh, let's for this case, triangles are similar, it means that uh, the ratio, the ratio of, let's say this side to this side, is the same as the ratio of, let's say, the hypotenuse to the hypotenuse of this triangle. And that means the scale factor is, is common. So the scale factor, this, this small triangle is enlarged by a scale factor uh, to give us this larger triangle. And that scale factor we said it's known as the linear scale factor. So, for example, for this case, we need to identify two lengths, one from this triangle and one from this triangle. So, for this triangle, we are given the hypotenuse, that is 10 centimeters. So, for triangle A, it is possible to get the hypotenuse of triangle A. So, using the Pythagoras theorem, uh, the, this hypotenuse of this triangle can be found by squaring uh, the other two sides, that is 3 squared plus 4 squared, and then getting the square root. So 3 squared plus 4 squared is uh, 25, and then get the square root of 25, which is 5. So this side, or this hypotenuse, is 5 centimeters. So, now we have the hypotenuse of triangle B and the hypotenuse of triangle A. So we want to ask ourselves, uh, what scale factor has been used to enlarge this triangle A to become triangle B? And what do we do? We are going to uh, to to use these two uh, measurements that we have for each one of them. We have the hypotenuse of A and the hypotenuse of B. So what you are going to do is that we are going to divide 10 centimeters by 5 centimeters. And this is going to be 2. So in other words, this triangle A has been enlarged by a scale factor of 2. So 2, we said it's the linear scale factor. And then we said also that if, uh, if a figure, let's say for this triangle, if this triangle is enlarged by a scale factor of 2, then the area is going to be enlarged by uh, a factor of the square of the linear factor. What what do I say? So we said that we have the linear scale factor and area scale factor. So if the linear scale factor is two, then the area scale factor is four. Okay. So if the linear scale factor is 3, the area scale factor is the square of 3, which is 9. So for this case, let's find the area of triangle A. So using the formula, 
a half times base times height, the area is going to be by 2, 1, by 2, 2. So the area of this triangle is going to be uh, 6, let me use a different color, sorry, let me use a different color. So the area is uh, 6 square centimeters. Okay, six square centimeters. That is the area of triangle A. So from this relationship, this area is going to be multiplied four times. Since the linear scale factor is two, the area scale factor is going to be four. And that means the area of the new triangle, that is triangle B, is going to be four times the area of this triangle. So it's going to be six times four is going to be 24 square centimeters okay so that's uh, how we can apply this knowledge on linear scale factor and area scale factor let's look at yet another example so uh, in a previous video uh, we learned how to find the volume of a frustum of a cone and that is also one area where we apply this knowledge on a linear scale factor and area scale factor and also volume scale factor. So we said that a frustum, a frustum of a cone is derived from a cone. That is, if we have one big cone and then it is cut at some point. So what we are left with is a frustum. So initially we had one big cone and then after it's cut we get a smaller cone. Okay, a smaller cone that way. So these two cones are similar. It's only that one is larger than the other, but they are similar. Okay, so sometimes you, you can be given the radius of this one, let's say, as 14 centimeters, and then the radius of this one is, let's say, 7 centimeters, okay? We have 14 there, and then we have 7. Then we need to find the, the vol, or rather the, you know, the height of these cones, okay? And you find that you don't have the height. Maybe you are given the height of the frustum, let's say from here to here, is 10 centimeters. But then you are not given, but then we need the entire height. So we can give, or we can let this height from here to here be x. So, so this is going to be, uh, so the entire length or height of the cone is going to be 10 plus x. So we can have 10 plus x centimeters, and then here we have x. So using this information, it's possible to get the length or the height of this, uh, of this cone. And we're going to use the knowledge on the scale factor. So if these two cones are similar, it means that the ratio of, let's say the radius to the radius is the same as the ratio of the height to the height, okay, the height of this, the larger one and the height of the smaller one. So we can have the ratio of the radius to the radius is 14 out of 7. So this is equal to the ratio of the height of the larger cone, which is 10 plus x, divided by the height of the smaller cone, which is x, okay. And we can now cross multiply to have 14x is equal to 7 times 10 plus x. So this is going to be 14x is equal to 70 plus 7x. Okay. So this we can subtract 7x on both sides. So that we have 7x is equal to 70. And x becomes 10 centimeters. So you see we have found the value of x. And x was there height of the the height of the smaller cone that was cut from this larger cone 
So if x is 10 centimeters, it means now that the height of the entire cone is 10 plus 10, which is 20 centimeters. So that's another way in which we can apply this knowledge on a linear scale factor, area scale factor, and also volume scale factor. So uh, we, we, we used this example in that video where we were learning how to find the volume of a frustum. So if you never happen to watch that video, I'm going to leave a link to it in the description box so that you can get to learn about it. So I believe we have understood and uh, we can now meet in the next video. So goodbye for now and let's meet in the next video.